This is a video on temporal difference methods in reinforcement learning. I'm Chandra Shripada. This is a video series with three videos. The eventual goal is to get to a point where we can apply a certain temporal difference algorithm to solve a particular version of a reinforcement learning problem. But going straight there will be difficult. What I want to do instead is to tackle a simpler problem, one that's simpler than the reinforcement learning problem, something I call the calendar problem that's mainly about prediction and doesn't have uh, the issue of action. We'll work with the calendar problem and we'll learn about a temporal difference method. Then we'll apply a temporal difference method to solve the, cal a, the, solve the calendar problem. With all that in background, I think we'll be in a good position to apply a certain TD al algorithm to solve a particular version of the reinforcement learning problem. So that's the overall game plan. Let's get started with video one. The calendar problem consists of your, a, a setup like this with the months of the year, and you will go through the year month by month and start again. So here I'm showing your transition from January to February to March, and so on. Um, these red numbers highlighted here, um, those are rewards that you're going to get in those months. Uh, and they're the size shown here, 2, 4, 2, and 10. Those numbers in blue are the probabilities with which you're going to get these rewards in those months. So, for example, there's only a three-fourth chance that you're going to get this reward of 2 in February. You're not told the values in red and blue at the start of the problem. At each point in time, what you know is the state that you're in, that is what month you're in, whether you got a reward in that state and how big it is, anything else you know is learned through experience. Your goal in the calendar problem is for each month, predict the cumulative expected reward that you will get in all subsequent months of the year ending in December. So what is expected reward? Um, it is the product of the reward amount times the probability with which it will be received. So for example, the expected reward here is 1.5. The predictions, these predictions of the cumulative expected reward that you're going to get in subsequent months, they're called state values, and it's abbreviated with V. Here, in green, I'm showing the true state values for this version of the calendar problem. So let's go through Let's go through this and see why these are the true state values. In December, the cumulative future reward that you will get, expected reward, is zero. In November, it's still zero. In October, this is important, it's still zero because the future reward you will get is nothing. It's not until September that there is an expected future reward. In particular, the expected future reward in September is 7.5, which is 10 times 0.75. You can see that now how these numbers are getting filled in and why the expected future reward is 9 for June. It's the 1.5 that you'll be getting in July plus the 7.5 that you get in October. Those summed together are the expected future rewards and that's why June is 9. So that's the numbers being assigned to all these states. How are you going to calculate these um, state values? The way we're going to do it is a method called temporal difference learning. So it's kind of a nifty method to get to these state values in a pretty cheap and computationally effective way. So the first thing I do is initialize all my state values to zero. That's what I've done over here. Every state value is starting at zero. Next, I start in January and I move to February. I'm putting the previous state in January, that, that is January, here in purple. And I'm introducing some terminology. The previous state I'm going to call S. The current state I'm going to call S prime. This is a very common notation that's used in the reinforcement learning literature, so I'm just following along with it. And here's some additional notation that I'm going to be using. The state value for state S is depicted as V parentheses S. 
the state value for state s prime is not surprisingly v parentheses s prime. The reward for state s prime is r s prime. That's my notation that I'm going to be using throughout. Now let me state the rule that I'll be following. There's two parts to the rule. The first part is doing something called calculate the prediction error. Each time you transition from s to s prime, you calculate this number. That is, the sum of the reward in s prime, rs prime, plus whatever state value you have in s prime. You sum those two numbers together, and then you subtract the state value for the previous state. So you're basically calculating a discrepancy between the sum of the value of this state and the reward of this state. Sum that and calculate its discrepancy from the value of the previous state. For now, this isn't supposed to make a whole lot of sense of why you do this. I'm going through the mechanics of what you actually do. So putting in some numbers here, the reward is for s prime is 2, the value of s prime is 0, the value of s is 0, so the prediction error, error is 2. Now I update the value of the um, previous state. The value of the previous state, the new value, is going to be the old value of the previous state plus alpha times the prediction error. Alpha is a parameter that represents something called the step size. It's how much of the prediction error you add on top of the old value to get to the new value. If alpha is 1, you take the entire prediction error. If alpha is 0, you take none of it. I'm using throughout these examples an alpha of 0.5. So let's put those numbers in. The prediction error is 2, alpha is 0.5, the old value for the state is 0, and so its new value is 1. And I'm showing the updating of the old value 0 becoming 1 over here. So I followed these two steps when I made the transition from state s to s prime. Now I transition from, remember my previous current state was February, and I transitioned to March. And that means my new previous state is February, my new current state is March. Now I follow these two steps again. What I claim is that if you do this, every single transition, you follow these two steps, and you do this again and again, the numbers that appear here will approximate the true state values. Remember the true state values that I gave you earlier in green? you will get to, eventually, the true state values for this problem. And that's pretty remarkable. Now, you may be saying, why does that work? And um, why do I want to calculate these state values? That'll be coming in subsequent videos. So what I've done so far is I've introduced the calendar problem and the steps of a temporal difference method. And um, in the next video, we're going to actually use this TD algorithm to solve the calendar problem in a more detailed way.